What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up and use World Traffic 3. This is the second part in a two-part video series on how to install and set this up. Uh, so if you missed the first part and need to still install that, go ahead and check that out. Uh, there will be a link for the video in the description, also a card on screen. Uh, so go ahead and check that out and show you how to install everything. Once you have it all installed um, properly, head over to your menu bar, click plugins, and then world traffic and flight setup. Now, just a few things to go over. I already have some of this stuff set up. As far as the aircraft information, you don't exactly need that in there. Um, but one thing that I would say is pretty important is the arrival airport because that'll generate the ground routes for that area as well. Now, if you're using the Zebo mod, a lot of people have issues with the aircraft type saying fighter like it does now. An easy fix to that is to change your flight configuration to a uh, the default Boeing 737. Click start a new flight and then do it once again and switch back to the Zebo, and you'll um, then have airline right there so everything's set up properly. Now as far as the flight plan loading and generation, what you want to do is do, if you can, the max number of flight plans. This just allows there to be as many as possible. Um, now if you don't have as great of a computer, maybe you don't want to set this stuff as high as I might have it. So if you're in a really, really heavily populated area like the Atlanta airport, maybe you want to just drop that down 7,000, 8,000. But they do recommend max settings. Now traffic density is obviously how much um, air traffic there's going to be. I have mine set to 70%. This can really affect your FPS. Percentage of gates with parked aircraft. It's just how many aircraft you're going to have parked at the gates at the airport. Obviously, you don't want to set this to 100% because pretty much no airport ever has 100% of their gates full. Atlanta is a much busier airport, so 80% would be pretty good for that. And then for flight plan, load radius, arrival and departure, I set that to 50 nautical miles, and that's just going to only generate flight plans for a 50 mile radius around my current location. Now, autogen uh, ground routes, you want to have that checked for if you don't have any ground routes generated, but if you do download ground routes, then you could probably uh, uncheck that. Autogen flights, uncheck if you're using the, the real traffic files. So we're going to go ahead and uncheck that. You know, if you followed the instructions properly, you should have the real traffic files installed. So you definitely want to uncheck that. That's going to be the difference of it loading in a reasonable amount of time or not. So there is another menu, and that is the activate key command menu and I have that program to my T1 button here on my ProFlight yoke. So we need to open that up and here's where you'll see a lot of information. You can navigate through this menu with your arrow keys to go up and down. Enter will go into your menu and then Backspace will close out of that. So you want to go to enable disable regions and we want to enable AFRE real traffic and we're going to have that unchecked there. Additionally, you can enable cargo tabular, which is going to um, generate cargo flights, not passenger flights. But you need to set those up if you're going to uncheck this. Otherwise, you can leave that check. The general aviation flights, obviously, you probably want to have that in there. And your military, both of those are kind of cool to have those in the air. Aside from that, you just click create flights. So for Atlanta, it's created 136, and for Tampa, it's doing 46. Now, I have ground routes already generated for Atlanta, but I don't have any for Tampa, so we should get a message saying that uh, some ground routes need to be generated for the Tampa airport. And there we go. So ground routes do not exist, and it tells you roughly how long it's going to take to generate those. So this says 48 minutes. So it took about... 30 to 40 minutes to generate all the ground routes. This is our flight setup results, and as you can see, it looks pretty good. The less lines that we have, the better it looks. So it generated 8,224 flights out of the 9,000 that we told it it could. So that's definitely a little bit more than I was expecting. So everything looks good, so we're gonna go ahead and close this out now, and we can close this out as well. Now we're gonna go over to our tower. And as you can see, the Atlanta airport looks alive and how it should. So if we give this a few minutes, um, we'll start to see some taxi. It does take a little bit of time to get everything going. So if we pull up our radar and then type in KATL, where we are right now, you can see all of the flights that are in the air. We'll select a uh, little bit further out. Now we said 50 nautical miles, so this is everything within 40 nautical miles. We have the blues that are approaching Atlanta. Um, so you can actually click on these and get some information on them. 
Um, so if we click on this one right here that's approaching and then do track, you can see that this plane right here is about to land here at Atlanta. So it's pretty cool. Tells you a little bit of information about that plane, where it came from, the type of aircraft that it is, the speed, altitude. Go ahead and end the video with that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out any links I have for any other videos in the description below. Thanks for watching. This is Josh, the Limitless Pilot.